He's the one that does the clothing. You know, thank God we've got a pastor who prays the Lord. If I'm an overachiever, I begin to rock Elisha with the faith. gave the war of God. And, and be a man of God. And they would just, oh, I just want you set free. Christ from the dead lives no, in. No, that this preacher told you the truth. Suggest align yourself with CGIA and let's go forth and take our communities for Christ. Welcome to CGIA today. Changing lives through ministry signs and wonders is one part of what CGIA is doing across the North American continent through ministers and individuals that are proclaiming the word of the Lord. Stay tuned coming up on today's broadcast. Because what I'm going to preach to you tonight is there's, there is an outpouring to come. And I don't care how you, you young people and older people that are being ordained, I don't care how you feel, you have something to do in this, in this outpouring to come. And I want you to understand that. And I believe tonight there's going to be an impartation not only to these who are being ordained, It's divided into two sections, 39, the same number of books you have in the Old Testament, and 27 from Isaiah 40 forward, the same number you have in the New Testament. From Isaiah 40 up through about 55, you have the servant poems. And so when you read the Bible, learn to read it in context. So I really wanted to know what, what to do in a wilderness because you pastors, African-American, Hispanic, Russian, 42 nations in front of me, you're gonna serve in a world where the Ukraine's being overthrown right now and where communism is trying to rise again. I'm telling you folks, there's a lot going on to discourage us. We are called to minister in a wilderness. So I wanted to look back in Isaiah and say, did he say anything else about the wilderness? And I got happy. Back in Isaiah chapter 40, if we can get this up on the screen, verses one through five. This whole section begins here. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, says your God. You look up at me and say, we'd have rather heard about biscuits again tonight and what you just said. <laughs> Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that our warfare is ended. Let me tell you folks, this ain't Armageddon we're about to face. We've already, we're already getting Egypt straightened out. We're gonna whip that bunch up in Syria. You wait and see. This thing ain't over and it's, this isn't Armageddon because I'm still here. And I believe we're gonna go through the tribulation. Well, I'm gonna get a little hang time during the rapture and say I told you so. You can stay, I'm leaving. Glory to God. Tell her her warfare is ended. Verse two, her iniquity is pardoned for she's receiving the Lord double for sins. Now listen to this. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Crying in the wilderness. Crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Here's the wilderness in the desert. Prepare the way of the Lord. Every valley be exalted, every mountain and hill brought low, crooked places made straight and rough places made smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. You say, Pastor Ron, I'm being ordained tonight. What do I have? What can I do? I'm just one person. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. And you go on. You go on in Isaiah 40, the voice said in verse six, look, cry out. And he said, what shall I cry? Everybody look here. I'm fixing to tell you what to do. And this isn't rocket science. This isn't complicated. Are you with me? The wilderness is life gone wild. In context, we find out that there, there, there's got to be somebody, if it's just one, that's willing to cry out in the wilderness and tell the truth. Well, if we're gonna cry out in the wilderness, how do we do it? Watch this. I'm not to the sermon yet, so this is, I'm not, it's probably all I'm gonna preach is this what I've got here right now. The voice said, cry out, and he said, what shall I cry? He said, cry all flesh is grass. And all this loveness is like the fly of the field. The grass withers, the flyer fades because the breath of the Lord blows on it, but surely the people are, are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. 
Now let me tell you what we cry out. There are three things here. Let me give them to you. Number one, the inadequacy of the flesh. Look at this. All flesh is grass. In verse seven, the people are grass. Now, can I tell you something after 35 years of the same church? There are not many forever friends. I got 6,000 plus members, about 3,000 of them come up, show up. Some of them J. Edgar Hoover couldn't find if we raised him from the dead. But you're not, you, hey, when you look at your congregation, you're dealing with sheep. Now you're talking about dumb. See, I can do this at your church. I smile at home and say, oh, y'all are wonderful. Read about sheep. They'll wander off. Lord, if you don't, you got to take offerings, Lord. If you don't shear them, they'll die. They stink. But you're called, believe it or not, to lead, feed, and breed sheep and shear them. That's what you're called to do. All flesh is grass. When you look at it, if you're looking at the people and thinking, well, boy, oh boy, we're gonna get it done. Don't look at them no matter how strong they look or how weak they look. Be not afraid of their faces. He says the voice of one. So number one, know that you can't trust the board all the time. You can't trust people all the time. You can't trust the flesh. Recognize it. You're walking into a tough world. And all flesh is grass. Number two, not only the addicts of the flesh, you need the breath of God. What can you do about grass? He said, blow on it. Kind of reminds me of Ezekiel over there when they had that valley of dry bones. See, I, I, I know some of you are pastoring dry bones church right now. What can you do to dry bone? You can blow, let the Holy Ghost blow on that baby. Just let him blow. This is what, I'm just telling you what the Bible says to do in the wilderness. You may be one. And you, have, you know that the flesh, not yours and not theirs, can get this done. I want to tell you, I've looked around the Evangel World Prayer Center and I've been to Lamar and the flesh couldn't do that. Yeah, yeah. I've been to Abba's house and I drive by there and I wonder how in the world did this ever happen? Flesh is inadequate, but the Spirit of God has power. The third thing you do in the wilderness is you declare the word of God. The grass withers. You're gonna have church members walk out on you. The flower fades. But the word of our God. What shall I cry? What are you gonna do, preacher man, preacher woman? What have you got? You got a voice. You may not have much money now, but you got a voice. Cry out, spare not. Ask the Spirit of God to blow. And preach the 66 books of the inerrant, infallible, God-breathed word, the word of the living God that brings faith and power and anointing. Hallelujah. What shall I cry out? I want to tell you folks, Understand the word of God and what you're looking at and what we're battling in the wilderness of the world is demonic and it's deceptive. And you can't, you can't negotiate. Our president, he's a, he, likes, he, likes, he thinks we can love everybody and you gotta love everybody for Jesus' sake, but sometimes you gotta cast out what can't be counseled out. <laughs> Hebrews said you ain't resisted under blood. Sometimes blood has to be shed. I mean, we are in a spiritual war. But I may not be but one person, but I've got a voice. And they didn't but a hundred of us show up on 9-11, but I stood on the courthouse steps of Hamilton County, Tennessee, and I cried out to God to touch our city and let us remember who it is. 
Our Christian commitment, our level, and I'm talking to ministers today, our level of commitment is so low. We quit so quick. It's unbelievable. We're dealing with the faith where they'll strap bombs to themselves and blow themselves to hell for what they believe. And bless God, we can't even get our people to give 10% of the income. I'm telling you, something's wrong. Somebody told me the other day, I had preachers come to me, had one, I was being interviewed on this American full nation radio. Brother Ron, you've been in the ministry 50 years. What's the secret of staying 35 years at a church? What's the secret of your ministry? I said, well, you've already said it. He, I said, he said, what is it? I said, I just decided to stay. Brother Ken knows this is true. It was really before his time, but when I was still, we were still officially Baptist, three times the board wanted to vote me out. After I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, you can't, but I mean, folks, you wouldn't believe what happened. See, we had Brownsville and didn't know. I didn't know I was speaking in tongues for two years. I didn't know what it was. My wife woke me up one night and said, what language are you talking in? And I said, tongue. She said, you gotta quit that, we're Baptist. <laughs> and I said, you need to get this. She said, I was Baptist born, Baptist bred. When I die, I'll be Baptist dead. <laughs> and one day she was in Jack Hayford's office. <laughs> he was supposed to be telling me about how to pastor a church. He said he ignored me completely and looked at my wife and said, you got the, you're the hungriest woman I've ever seen in my life for God. He entered a book called The Beauty of Spiritual Language. Two weeks later, at 5.30 in the morning, I heard something sounded like a coyote. Uh, <laughs> and my wife is a Southern belle. Brock's met her other day. I mean, this woman's an English major and plays classical music. A big day for her is Beethoven. Josh Grobin's her favorite singer, along with, Bo, uh, what's his name, Bocelli or whatever it is. And I mean, she's speaking in tongues like a wildcat on the back porch. That got the deacons to have another meeting. I mean, that, that, things are getting worse. Long as we had Miss Phillips, we were all right. Now look at her, she's got lost her mind. Judy Jacobs comes over to do a women's event. She wraps the event up. My wife's standing on, on the stage. Judy looks at her and says, you're no longer to teach school. You're to teach Bible at the church. My wife heard it and fell out. <laughs> there was no catchers because we didn't know about that. We didn't know what it was. It looked like hydraulics. I mean, not a hair went out of her place. Her dress didn't come up. My daughter ran to the phone to call 911, thought she'd had a stroke. She got up and resigned the next day. And today leads the Bible group ministry of Abba's house that has 2,000 people a week in Bible study. Hallelujah. You've got a voice. You've got the Holy Spirit. And you've got a book that lives. The grass will wither, the flower fade, but the word that you're to preach will abide forever. Hallelujah. One last thing. You go over to Isaiah 44. He says, I'm gonna put a river in the desert. I believe that represents the contemporary church. He said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. And when we get them down, when we pave that road, when we go out there, if we're just a voice, we go out there and we cry out and the Spirit of God moves, the Word of God moves, and they start following us back to the church. It can't be a desert when they get there. It's got to be a revival. And here's what his promise is, and I'm through, and we're going to ordain these folks. God says in Isaiah 44, 1 and 2, Hear me now, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I've chosen. Thus says the Lord who made you and formed you from the womb, who will help you. <laughs> he says, I will pour water on him who's thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and on your offspring. My God, that, I, I, I mean, let's think about that. They hadn't prayed. They hadn't brought enough money. They hadn't did, done what they were supposed to do, but there was a voice. 
when they were when the church wasn't right, when it was a desert, when the nation had gone wild, saw a voice. Somebody stood up in Louisville, Kentucky, and Hughes Lamarck, Texas, and somebody will stand up. Where are you from? A voice crying in the wilderness. I will pour water on him and search. I love God, don't you? <laughs> this is so true. It is so true. I will pour water on him who's thirsty. You look back at this con the context of this passage. You haven't prayed. You haven't brought sacrifice. You brought me no sweet cane with money. Yeah, you, you, you've covered me up with your sin. You, you haven't done what you're supposed to do yet. Everybody say yet. yet. That's grace, isn't it? God said, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. interested in becoming ordained through CGI this fall at the National Conference in Louisville, Kentucky? Visit CGIAmericas.org or call 502-964-3304 extension 1216 for more on how you can be credentialed through CGIA. don't you <laughs> this is so true it is so true I will pour water on him who's thirsty you look back at this con the context of this passage you haven't prayed you haven't brought sacrifice you brought me no sweet cane with money yeah you, you've, you've covered me up with your sin you, you haven't done what you're supposed to do yet everybody say yet, yet. that's grace isn't it God said, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, Brother Bob. He said, I'm taking away every condition. I don't care if you hadn't prayed. You can pay up on your giving later. You haven't done what you're supposed to. And life has gone wild. But I've looked down to Louisville. And there was a man named Wayman. And he was a voice. And now there's a Bob there. And in the middle of this, I mean, I go around here and I see 20 some feeding centers and 7 million hungry people have been fed. And I look around and there, there's 7,000 people in this church last Sunday. And I look around here and, and I, you can go around Louisville and see everything is wrong. But there's a voice. And God said, if I've got a voice, even if the church isn't right, even if they hadn't prayed, even if the tithe isn't paid up, he said, yet, 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 because there's a voice, I will pour water. And he reduces the condition for revival to one. I will pour water not on him who's tithed up, not on him who's done everything right, but I will pour water on him who's thirsty. That's it. That's it. Jesus said, blessed are they that hunger and thirst, they shall be filled. David cried as the deer pants after the water brook. So thirst my soul for thee, O God. Isaiah will cry in 55, oh, everyone that's thirsty. You can't imitate and fabricate spiritual thirst. You can have a contemporary church, you can use modern marketing methods, and you can grow a crowd, but you won't have a church. A church is full of people that's hungry and thirsty for righteousness and for God. I will pour water on him that's thirsty. I saw it happen to my wife. I saw it happen in my own life. I gave my testimony last night of being baptized in the Holy Ghost. My little boy, he's 33 now, has already been voted to be pastor of Abba's house. As I let him have more and more, God is going to raise him up, but eight and a half years ago, he had left the church. Oh, he was called and saved and baptized in the Holy Spirit at 16 under a church of God, man that used to be head of the denomination, church of God. But he fell in love with a little girl and quit Lee. He had the record at Lee University for the most classes not attended. 
By the way, all three of my kids gave me hell. Every last one of them. I didn't have a single compliant child. But every one of them's landed on their feet, but to the glory of God, because if you train up a child in the way he goes, when he's old, he'll not depart from it. Eight and a half years ago, Ronnie was on his way to a sports bar, left his little wife and his new baby on his way to a sports bar to get drunk and gamble on Monday night football. While he was on his way, he drove by our building under construction. And the Holy Ghost said, boy, your daddy's building that for you to fill up. He's building that for you and for me. Ronnie went on the sports bar, started drinking. Spirit of God sat down by him in a sports bar. Called one of his buddies and said, can you take me home? I've had a little bit too much to drink, but I need to leave. And this boy, looked, who's now a member of our church, looked at him and said, we all know you're not supposed to be here. He went home and told his wife, said, uh, I really need to talk to daddy. She said, well, I'll call him. He said, oh, he won't come. It's midnight. She called me, and she's afraid he's going to kill himself. And I went over there. And when I walked in the door, he lashed out at me at first. And I just took those blows, listened, didn't argue back. Because all of us in the ministry have been away more than we need to, Walter, from our kids, no matter how hard we try. That's just part of it. A few minutes after he lashed out, he came over and fell down at my feet and began to cry and weep over my feet. He said, Daddy, will you forgive me? He said, Daddy, I, I've got a good job at Unit Provident Insurance, but, but if you'll let me, I just want to come over to the church and help you the rest of my life. His wife went home, but my wife took the baby and we, say, we I made some coffee. He laid down on the floor. He said, Daddy, will you lay down here with me? And he wept his way back to Jesus. <laughs> Gradually, he came back on full time. But it was, God began to do something unusual back in the beginning of 2012. And he was doing a lot of preaching for FCA and preaching a lot of revivals. And he was over in the Dominican Republic where we now have a church and a feeding center and building an orphanage. And while he was there, he was sleeping on the beach. Uh, it was a rough area, but they had young people that were there, so it was not a polished area. And the Holy Spirit woke him up and said, your dad's gonna die, you need to get home and make sure he gets to a heart doctor. That's something I'm doing. Well, he came home and I went down and got checked and they couldn't find anything. He wouldn't turn it loose. Damon Thompson was at our church and Damon said, Pastor, there's something wrong with you. I was supposed to fly to New Orleans, but my best friend Ron Rowlett canceled the trip and I went over to have a stress test. Same thing happened to Brother Jesse Duplantis, by the way. And I had that stress, I'd never had any chest pain. I had that stress test and that thing went berserk. They laid me down, put a thousand dollar shot in my arm, put nitro under my tongue, gave me an aspirin. And my cardiologist said, Dr. Phillips, you're not going home today. They went in and did an arteriogram that afternoon. I said, if something's wrong here, I want Dr. Morrison. I had what's called the Widowmaker. Three arteries completely blocked. If you have a heart attack with this, you're gone. They can't bring you back. When I woke up from the arteriogram, Dr. Morrison was standing there. He said, I'm going to do surgery on you in the morning, but I'm, a, I'm afraid you're going to have a heart attack before we can get this settled down. So he said, I'm, he ran a balloon up through the arteriogram and put a balloon to help my heart beat that night, a balloon pump. The next morning they were getting ready to do that surgery. That boy came in and he said, Daddy, what do you want me to do? I knew I was going to be out for a while. <laughs> I said, son, I've got 30 years of equity in. Spend it. And let me tell you how wise he was. He's a good preacher. He called Perry Stone. He called Jensen Franklin and others. He preached some, and he brought those great giants in, and they were all willing to come in. And for three months, the deacons, I had no cell phone. I had no computer. I wasn't allowed to even know what was going on. The staff wasn't allowed to see me for three weeks as I recovered from 
completely no damage to my heart, complete successful surgery. A young man in our church that's very wealthy, that's done very well, walked up to me and he said, you know, he's already pastor of this church. And we're to help him get that done. And I watched God bring that boy back to where God wanted him to be. I'm telling you folks, it doesn't matter whether it's my boy or your children. Even, where life has gone wild, you hear me. If there's a voice and there's a Bible and there's the Holy Spirit, God can bring awakening to that community and if to that community to that city and if to that city to the nation and if the nation one more time a latter rain outpouring of God give him glory and praise. Hallelujah. Would you stand on your feet right now all over the building. Give him a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I turn this over to Brother Bob for the ordination, I want to say this to all of you who are Christians. The Muslims cannot stop revival. Hollywood cannot stop it. All the failures and successes cannot stop it or start it. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. These things shall be, these things shall be, nor help shall come from the scarlet skies till my people rise. Till my people come, my voice is dumb. I cannot come till my people come. From all the flaming earth and sea, the cries of my people must come to me. Not till their spirit break the curse will I claim my own in the universe. But if my people rise, if my people rise, saith God, I will answer them from the swarming skies. Give them a shout. Order today's sermon in its entirety by calling the number on the screen or visit cgiamericas.org for ordering information and to see today's program again. Order your copy of the CGIA 2014 Implantation Conference today online for only $30. It includes all the ministry and miracles of the CGIA National Conference from 2014 plus more. This is a limited time offer, so visit cgiamericas.org and order your copy on DVD today. Join us next week at the same time for CGIA Today and stay connected with us online and on Facebook and Twitter.